All right, so it's uh, Saturday something. Saturday, April something. I know it's a few days before our taxes are normally due, um, and the government has extended it because we are in the middle of COVID-19, the coronavirus. Um, I'm just saying that because this is going to be up on YouTube for a while, and we may not remember what it was like. Or we may. We may hold that in our hearts, this time in our hearts for a long time. Um, anyway, just, just saying it. Because I was thinking about Vincent Van Gogh. And, um, you know, a couple months ago, I got on a kick where I was saying, what's Vincent together? And we romanticize Vincent Van Gogh. Um, his paintings sell for extraordinary prices now, and that's something that has um, bothered me, and I've talked about that he was not appreciated when he was alive. His work was not seen as valuable then. And, um, you know, I take great offense to the fact that the art world has not discovered me, wonderful me, and lifted me to the heights, me to the heights that I believe I should be lifted to. Uh, my little green monster comes out. I'm extremely jealous and angry and very frustrated because um, only a tiny handful of living artists are actually lifted to those heights. And uh, sometimes they very arrogantly believe um, they have done something magical. I don't know what they believe because I can't live in other people's heads. But it, it just seems to be an arrogance that I see that deeply, it deeply troubles me in artists that are successful. So we're going to put that aside for the moment, my jealousy, my green monster, and me shaking my fist at the world. Why not me? And what I want to talk about is Vincent. And I oftentimes think, as I said, how much work he could have produced if he were seen. But we're living in a time right now where almost none of us are being seen. And this is what I want to get to. Well, this is what I want to get to in my, you know, roundabout way, is that we're not just not being seen. Our work can be seen online, but we are essentially connected to Vincent van Gogh in new ways. Pretty much every artist I know is running out of supplies or have, their studios have been closed and they weren't able to get out their supplies. I was just having that discussion with someone a couple days ago, someone on Facebook. He is very frustrated, very anxious, very fearful, and very frustrated because he doesn't have the supplies that he's used to having by his side. Um, so he can't work. and. Um, you know, one of my one of my mantras is use what you have. So I was trying to help him find that place where he can use what he has. What does he have on hand? Most of us are, are running out of supplies. Most of us don't have access to art supply stores because they're closed. And I was reminded of that again this morning when um, I was thinking about my fat boy frames, uh, the ones I got from uh, a place called Soho Art Supplies in Lower Manhattan. They're hand handmade in Brooklyn, great canvases, perfectly stretched, perfectly gessoed canvases. And I love them. The ones I was getting, I think, were about $160 a piece, and I loved them. And I'm like, gee, I wonder what they're up to. And um, I went on their site. I'm living in a community that is not shut down, that is not ravaged like New York with the COVID-19 virus. And I had forgotten. I had forgotten. I had forgotten. That there are people living a, a more restricted life than I am. So I went on, and their website is up, um, but you can't shop, of course. You have no way to order supplies. And I was thinking about artists there, and artists across the country and around the world, 
who are isolated and they may be trapped in their apartments because of the conditions of the environment that they live in. But it, it drew me to Vincent van Gogh and his isolation. He was, he was isolated, he was afraid, he was frustrated, he was angry, and it drove him to severe mental illness. Uh, we know he had a history of being a religious zealot, which also didn't do him any good. Um, that was before he became a painter. But as he became a painter, and a painter who colored outside the lines, so to speak, didn't do work that other people were doing, he felt, he, be, he didn't feel, he became more and more isolated. So I did have a more eloquently way of putting it. Well, I was walking Bugsy, I was thinking about this, and I had a perfect prose put together. But we are, most of us are, living a life that is somewhat similar to Vincent van Gogh now. We can't go to gatherings, we can't go to galleries. We are not able to partake of the life that we quite normally enjoy or would like to enjoy. So I think we can empathize with Vincent a little bit better. I hope I'm getting to the point I wanted to make um, or driving across the point that I was hoping to make. we have a little bit better understanding of who Vincent was and why he was the way he was. He had no money. He depended, he depended on his brother Vincent to send him supplies and depended on Vincent for food, much like we are dependent on our circumstances to not worsen to be able to eat and to be able to survive. That being said, let's take what we have, what we have available, try and come at it, come at your work with the tenacity, the strength, and the courage of Vincent. He wasn't painting beautiful women on a, on a chaise lounge. He wasn't driven to do that. He was driven to do what was in his heart and in his soul. And he was capturing the, the countryside um, a lot of the time. And now it's something we revere, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, let's take the supplies that we have, the ability to connect as best we can, just like Vincent, under these circumstances, just like Vincent, and produce work. Yeah, I think that's it. So let's do a studio mate in another state. Um, I hope that helps to make you feel less powerless and more powerful. Vincent, when he ran out of canvases that Theo had sent him, would take paintings off stretchers and put over a, a dish towel, stretch a dish towel to paint on because he had that driving need under the mental illness, under the severe anger and anxiety and frustration and knowing he would never make it or believing he would never make it and no one would ever see his work. He kept doing it regardless. He took that dish towel and made it into something that he was made it into something that he was compelled to make something like that. Anyway, he was driven, blah, 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 dish towels. Uh, let's get to work, though. Let's get to it. <laughs> Didn't come out anywhere near as beautifully as I hoped it would, but I hope it inspires you to take what you have and work with it. Maybe right now it's just drawing on old uh, note paper or painting on old note paper. Uh, making stencils using uh, old printout papers, things that you don't, you know, paper that you don't need. Maybe it's making stencils out of that, which I'm going to be doing later. Um, 
Maybe it's going to a lesser project that you meant to get to but didn't quite. And I've got a ton of those piled up. So I'll make, uh, hopefully we'll do studio mate in another state while I'm doing that. Um, it's just taking what you have. I am running out of paint. I am running out of my colors. Do I stop painting because my cerulean blue is low? Or my 1980 teal by Gamblin is almost gone? No. No. Because without this, without this, without the artwork, where am I? We're all trying to find ways of staying relevant. We're all trying to find ways to make ourselves feel even remotely passionate about being alive. For me, without this, there's no point. There's none. And I don't want anyone to feel that way. But I hope you feel as passionate about your life. Feel so passionate about your life that you keep producing work. Sort of hit the mark, maybe? I don't know. Let's get to work. Welcome to Studio Mate from another state. I'm going to put in Hamlet, my favorite play, you know, even though it's by a celebrated artist. Um, I do love it. I love Hamlet. I love Hamlet. Oh. So I'm going to put it in my ear and listen while I work alongside you. Okay. Let's Vincent. Let's let's Vincent D. <laughs> what a goober. Yeah, listening to Hamlet on Audible. This is what I'm working from, sort of.
There's a small dot on my screen that's right in the middle of his nose. Looks like he's got a little yellow booger. By the way, that's what I'm doing.
Okie dokie. So I'm going to stop because we've been at this for almost an hour. Let me back this up. Yeah, we've been working for almost an hour. And I mean, I can work for three, four hours at a time. Well, with snacks. And, but I'm not sure what the new iPad can hold. So, um, and how it'll work with YouTube. I'm not quite sure yet how much we can endure or how much they can endure together. So I'm going to cut this, I'm going to cut this off in a couple minutes, but I do want to say, I do want to remind everybody um, to reflect, maybe take this time and reflect on Vincent and try and find your connection to what made um, how, okay, how Vincent, how Vincent was able to continue to produce work while having very little materials or no materials, almost no materials, almost no money, almost no food, um, being isolated as much as he was from any community he lived near and hope to be a part of. Find that connection between you and him and his circumstances. Throughout history, there's been millions and millions and millions. This isn't a new story. We're not new to this. Or it's not, oh, how shocking. You know, as artists, we, we don't belong. Or we can't partake. It's a familiar story. Vincent's is one of the most well-known, though. So let's find our connection to Vincent. Let's find a reason to persevere, to find our, let's find our drive. But also, let's try and find a way to make ourselves feel relevant at this point in time. Let's find a new way of doing things with the materials we have at hand instead of lamenting over what I normally lament over, which is, oh, I want to be here, I want to be there, I want to do this, I want to have that. I want to have my fat boys from Sarah, the Soho art materials or supplies. I want to have um, more mineral spirits, which I'm almost out of. Instead of lamenting, let's find what we have, find our creativity to use our materials. Put them to work. Keep pushing forward, okay? Stay well, stay safe, and uh, we'll do this again soon. In fact, I think I'm going to pull out some paper and do a project uh, in a little bit. Um, we'll do this again soon, studio made again soon. Ciao.